What's up, Navigation Traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, March 29th. We're going to be reviewing our trades for the week. This is exclusively for our pro members. Before we do that, let's jump into the community and discuss who got caught being hot this week. Each week, we like to recognize one member of the community. This week goes to our friend Brent Crowley. Brent uh, sent over a spreadsheet that he personally worked on himself. Uh, this includes some pivot tables. In fact, let me give you a quick sneak peek. Uh, this is what it looks like. So it's, this is all of our closed trades going all the way back to when we first started posting in June of 2017, uh, all the way through. So the cool thing about this table is we can simply add them to the end and it updates all these other tables, which break down all the um, all the strategy it breaks it down by strategy, breaks it down whether it's a future versus a non-future symbol, uh, breaks it down by symbols to give you kind of the the overall profits per symbol, uh, breaks it down by strategy so you can get an idea of what the total profits were per strategy, and then also average profit per strategy. So some pretty cool stuff. Uh, I want to take it even a step further here and kind of break it down by month and, and year, and we'll do some other cool stuff with it. And this is something that I will share with you all as well. But big shout out to Brent. Thanks for putting that together, Brent. You got caught being hot. All right, let's jump into the alerts for the week. If we take a look, starting with Monday the 25th was our first alert. And that was an opening adjusting trade in ZN, which is the notes. So we just added a short strangle in the notes and um, implied volatility on TLT got up to 85, IEF was at 61. And so we just went ahead and added to this. So if we take a look at ZN, uh, you can see yeah, earlier this week, Wednesday, the Fed came out and said that they are holding steady on rates. So they did not increase rates, and that was positive for the bond market, bond and note market. So you saw that it shot up. Now it's kind of retraced the last couple of days, but that's where we are in the notes. So we've got two pieces on here. Uh, we've got our uh, we've got our straddle here that we adjusted into. After price moved up, breached our break even, we rolled up our untested side, which in this case was the puts. And so this is what that looks like here. Price has moved up, you know, since then. So we need a little bit of downside movement in the notes to get back into range there. And then we've also got our, uh, this is the alert that we sent out. So this is the short strangle. So we just added some more credit, uh, trying to work our way out of that one. So that one's dead centered, nothing to do there except for wait at this point. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in DIA. So we added an iron condor in DIA. You know, we've had kind of those short call verticals that were originally part of iron condors. And, um, and we've, we've taken, so we've only got, we've got one of those on left, which is this here. So we could use a little bit of downside to get back into range there. But then we went ahead and added an iron condor on here because implied volatility did spike earlier this week. And price has moved up a little bit since then, but still well within range here on our iron condor. So just continuing to hold that at this point. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in CL, which is oil. So we're getting down to that 21 days to expiration. So when we have uncovered options, naked options, we like to roll those when we get down to around that 21 days uh, because the risk, the gamma starts to accelerate at that point. And so we went ahead and rolled out to June with 51 days. And so what we did here is price moved higher. So we just adjusted our puts up from 56 to 58. So we had the 56 straddle. We just rolled our puts up two strikes. And so now we've got the minus 58 puts and the minus 56 calls in June. Um, before we go to the platform, let me just skip up to today because we did another roll in CL as well. So we had two pieces on in oil. So that was the first one. Our second piece was still in May, uh, but we just gave it a few days to kind of spread out these rolls. So at this point, we are 18 days to expiration. And with this one, we just rolled, kept basically the same strikes. The only difference is because we already had the minus 58 put in June, we just chose the 57 and a half so that, that we didn't overlap there. Uh, so now we've got the uh, now we've got the um, 
uh, 53 call and the 57 and a half put in June as well. So let's go to the platform. I will hopefully tie that together for you. So these are the two pieces. So we've got the 53. Let me reset this so I can check the correct boxes. So we've got the uh, 53 call and the 57 and a half put. Okay, so that's this one here. Price is hanging out in the upper end of the range, so definitely could use some some downside in oil to get back there. You know, I was ho I was hoping earlier this week. You know, when we we came down here, I mean, if we just went down another dollar or so, I mean, we literally could have been out of these trades with a profit. That's how close we are. Of course, price ripped back higher, so we just we need to stay in it and extend duration. Um, but we are, you know, we're we're pretty close in this one after that huge massive move that we battled out of almost, I mean, we were that far away from even getting out this week at a profit, but uh, I think we'll still be able to manage just fine. Um, so anyway, oh, let me go back to the Analyze tab. So so that's that piece, and then our other one, which was a 56 straddle, and now is a 56 call, 58 put. Price is hanging out right here. So again, just a little bit of a, you know, a couple moves down to a couple points down to 58 or 57. I mean, we're going to be in really good shape on this trade. Obviously, if price does continue higher, we'll stay mechanical, continue to roll our positions, roll our untested side, and do exactly like we teach in the course. All right, so let me jump back here, back into line, back into order. Uh, so there's that oil. Next one was a closing adjusting trade in wheat. So we had on two different uh, iron condors. Price moved higher, and so we closed out the put vertical side of one of those iron condors. So we're still holding the call side. And so if we go to wheat, uh, let's take a look at that piece first, which would be this one here. So price came out, breached our break even. Now price has come all the way back into range the last couple of days. Nice move down into wheat. So if we get down to about 450, we'll just take this one off, book a uh, profit overall on that piece. And then we're still holding this iron condor here uh, where we've got some profit, uh, but not enough to take off yet. So just holding on at this point uh, to wheat. Next trade was a closing trade in TLT. So ended up taking a loss on this one, just cutting cutting losses. Couple of reasons. One, I, when I when I showed you the notes, I already mentioned that uh, you know the Fed came out and held steady on rates. Okay, so the really the wind at the back is really to the upside on notes and bonds. Now, you know, there's nothing that says in the short term for sure that this thing can come down, but you know, I just. My personal assumption, anticipation is that notes and bonds will, you know, if they do come back a little bit, they will continue to the upside. Um, but, you know, who knows? That I, I could definitely be wrong, but I like to play with things with the wind at my back a little bit. And at this point, wind is at the back of higher prices in notes and bonds. And the fact is, we've already got exposure in the notes, you know, so I didn't want that much short exposure and when I say short exposure, that one's pretty delta neutral. But remember what I showed you here on um, on on this piece on the straddle. Uh, we're we're bearish here, right? We need that to move down as well. So those those couple things in conjunction, um, you know, with what the Fed did, you know, I just didn't want that much exposure, uh, short exposure in the notes and bonds together. And so for that reason, I cut loose TLT. And just took a loss on that one. So it was about an $875 loss. So not a good one. Not not one that I like to do. I did get a question in the community about, hey, you know, can't why why didn't we or why, you know, can't we roll this? Yeah, absolutely. You certainly could extend duration, but again, I just didn't want to keep that short exposure uh, in that in that category at this point. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in IWM. And that's the Russell 2000. So we just added an iron condor in IWM. Implied volatility percentile spiked up to 62 at that point. And so we went ahead and added that one on. So if we take a look at IWM, here is what that looks like. And today we took off our other one for a profit. So this is, just, this is the alert we sent out. This is the new one that we added. So price still pretty centered. Not looking to do anything here except for wait on that one. 
Next trade was a closing trade in FXI. So we booked our iron condor there, booked around 30% of max profit on that trade. Remember that was a, a pretty tight iron condor. So we weren't waiting for the full 40% there or 50%. We went ahead and booked 30 on that and implied volatility contracted to, you know, down at the t level of 10. So we went ahead and closed that out, booked a nice profit there. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in XRT, which is the retail ETF. And so we just rolled our short strangle from April, we got down to that 21 days to expiration, rolled it out to May with 50, kept our strikes exactly the same. You know, I just mentioned we need lower prices here. And uh, we're not going to add to this because implied volatility is fairly low. You can see the IV percentile at that time was 15. If we take a look at XRT, it has moved down a little bit since that roll. Uh, just looking for a little bit more downside to benefit that. And of course, if, if implied volatility does pick up in there, we would potentially add to this. But I mean, look at this. It's gotten even lower. IV percentile of two, IV rank of four. So definitely not looking to add to that one at this point. Next one, rolling adjusting trade in SMH. This was a very similar position where we had an inverted strangle. We just rolled this out from uh, April to May. We were down under that 21, day, 21 days to expiration. We were at 20, so we kept the strikes the same. And then we've also got another set of short strangles in April. Uh, so that's under 21 days to expiration as well, but we just want to spread out these rolls. We don't want to do it all on one day. And so that's where we're at here. Let's take a look at SMH. So we've got these two pieces on. Uh, we've got the one that we just rolled out to uh, out to May, and that's this one here. So you can see price is kind of hanging out in the upper end of the range. We just need a little bit of down movement to get get back into good shape there. And then this one here is not has not been adjusted, and this one's still in April. Now what I'm hoping happens is that we just get a all we need is a little tiny move into early next week, and we'll just go ahead and close this one out and book it. If it does continue higher early next week, however, we'll roll up the puts and roll out to May. So we'll uh, roll up the puts to around the 30 delta, and then we'll roll that out to May to extend duration on the trade. Uh, obviously, the best would be if it just moved a little move down. We went ahead and booked that, got out of it, and then just kept our other piece that's already in May. So we'll see what happens. And next trade, rolling adjusting trade in CL. I already went over that one. That was the second piece in oil that we rolled. And then lastly today, our closing adjusting trade in IWM where we closed out that other iron condor. Booked over 45% of max profit on that piece of the trade. And I already showed you IWM on the charts. All right, so those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions, starting with forward slash 6B, which is the British pound. Now, implied volatility has stayed high in here because there is still some fear or uncertainty, I should say, around the whole Brexit issue that's going on in Europe and the UK. Uh, the date has been extended uh, on the final decision of that. So if we look at FXB, which is the corresponding ETF, you can see, I mean, look at this implied volatility. It's been, it's been high for a long time, which is, uh, has been good to trade with, uh, but we're just, we need a little bit of a contraction here to, uh, to get back to profits in 6B. We're basically at break even on the trade overall, but uh, looking, to, looking to get some profits. I mentioned CL, ES. We've got this long put vertical that we're just holding for that short delta exposure. Speaking of short delta, we are at about two to one on our short delta versus theta ratio. Uh, so decent, decent little position there. I'm, I mean, right where we wanna be, I mean, you know, two to th uh, two to three to one, either two to one or three to one is ideal. Remember, we, we fluctuate within that range of between one to one and five to one typically, uh, but we're in good shape on our overall ratio there. Natty gas, we need some upside movement in that gas. Here are our two pieces combined. If we break these up and take a look, here's the first one. You can see price is hanging out here down near the lower end of the range. If we look at just the calls, what you'll see is we still got a decent amount of premium, so nothing, uh, no urgency to adjust that yet. And then here's the other piece where price is, is down here out of range. If we take a look at just the calls here, again, we've got a, we've got a little bit of wiggle room to, to let it go. If it does continue lower, we will continue to stay mechanical, roll down those calls, and, uh, and just continue to play the game. 
I mentioned ZN, mentioned ZW, I mentioned DIA, uh, Disney. We've got a short strangle on in Disney, dead centered, got some profit, just waiting for some more before we take that off. EEM, we've got this short call vertical. We're basically at break even on the trade overall, even after a couple of adjustments. So just looking for a little bit of downside. I mean, if we can get down to, you know, 41 and a half bucks, you know, just a couple bucks lower, buck and a half lower, you know, we can book a nice profit here of over $400 on the trade. Um, but we need that downside. Uh, I was hoping we were, you know, earlier this week we were down here and I was hoping we were going to just continue to roll over. But of course, popped its head up and we're, now we're back here to our break even point uh, on the trade. So just continuing to wait there. EWZ got a short strangle on here. Implied volatility spiked higher uh, earlier this week, Put on, sold some premium. We've got a little bit of profit here, but not quite enough to take off. Uh, I mentioned IWM, IYR. We've got this tight iron condor. Now, this is one where we could have adjusted today. I looked at it to adjust, but figured I'd give it over the weekend, see if we can get a little bit more downside, get back into range here. If we take a look at just our untested side, you can see a lot of that premium sucked out of there, but we, we, we still have a little bit of room, a little bit of leeway to let this, let this go. And that's why I just held it over the weekend. Uh, hopefully, we get back into range uh, early next week. If not, we will close out the untested side. As far as the implied volatility, yeah, it's creeping back down again. So probably would not be looking to add to this unless implied volatility popped higher. J and J, I looked at getting out of this one for a profit of uh, you know a couple hundred dollars, but we really were looking for at least twenty percent. We're at about two hundred fifty dollars of profit. Unfortunately, it's come down a little bit since then, with implied volatility contracting. But if we can get a quick pop higher. Uh, into early next week, we'll go ahead and take this one off. NVIDIA, NVIDIA, We've this one's been kind of frustrating. Price was way down here. We almost had to adjust to this side and then it ripped back higher as it dead centered, but we didn't quite have enough profit at that time to take it off and now it's ripped even higher. Now hanging out in the upper end of the range. So if we can just get a little bit of a downside movement uh, back down to about the 170 level, uh, we should be able to book a, book a nice profit here. Obviously, if it continues higher, <coughs> we'll close out the untested side and, and and see what happens. You know, there is not earnings coming up anytime soon, uh, so we don't have to worry about that for a while. So we've got some time in NVIDIA. We are in the April cycle, so we've got 20 days there. So got some time. Uh, hopefully, we get a little bit of downside in NVIDIA and we can book that one. QQQ, we've got these two sets of short call verticals. One of them just out of range here, so looking for some downside to benefit that. The other is in the profit, but uh, just waiting for some more before we do anything there. So holding those for that short delta exposure. I mentioned SMH. SPY, we've got an iron condor here. Spread this out so you can see it a little bit better. Price is hanging out up here in the upper end of the range, so a little bit more theta decay. A little bit of downside movement would benefit that. XLK, need some downside to get back into range here. This is a long put vertical that we put on specifically for that short delta exposure and we've rolled a couple times. And so just continuing to hold that one at this point. And XRT, I mentioned that one, uh, just looking for a little bit of downside, more time to pass before we do anything there. So those are all the alerts, those are all the trades. The other thing I was gonna show you guys is in the members area, uh, if you look at current portfolio, I've started adding the uh, image of the actual analyzed tab. So if you scroll down here, as we kind of make these adjustments and add trades, we're, we're, we're adding that in. You'll see a couple that still don't have it because we haven't made an adjustment yet or anything. But uh, hopefully that's helpful. Uh, one thing we were we were planning on putting the current portfolio and the closed trades and everything in the community. The problem is, unfortunately, with that platform, uh, it does not allow us to post things without people people being without members being able to comment. And when you comment, it kind of brings it up to the be beginning of the string. And so we're we're looking for a way to be able to post those so they're just static, so that members can view them without without uh, posting on them and kind of messing up the order. So we're working on that, uh, but for now it's gonna stay in the members area. 
So if you need to go back into the current portfolio and ever view these, figure out where exactly we we're at on the trade, it is all there. So hopefully that's helpful. Everybody have a great weekend. Look forward to another great weekend of trading next week. Somebody bring us some high implied volatility. We need it. Have a good weekend, everybody. Talk to you soon.